We have to evaluate this integral, and you're probably doing so in the section on trigonometric substitution, but it's not probably obvious how this really resembles any one of the trigonometric substitution forms. And so what we actually need to do is a little bit of revision in the way in which this is written. And the first thing that we can do is rearrange the terms in standard order. So you'd have negative x squared plus 6x plus 40. And then we're going to do a procedure known as completing the square. And as we will see, this will be useful to us. Now, to complete the square in this case, we're just going to look at these first two terms right here. We have a leading negative sign in front of x squared. Let's factor that out, but just from the first two terms. So you would have negative parentheses x squared minus 6x and then plus 40. All of this is still underneath the integral. To complete the square, basically you just take this coefficient of x and you do two things to it. The first thing you do is you divide by 2, and then you take that result and you square it. So if we take negative 6 and divide it by 2, we get negative 3. If we square negative 3, we get positive 9. So what's going to happen is we're going to include a plus 9 inside of the parentheses there. But be careful. This is a little tricky. So Bear with me here, but you have a negative sign out front. Now, a negative, if we distributed it back to that positive 9, would actually be a minus 9. So technically, we've incorporated a minus 9 underneath the square root. Now, you can't just throw a random minus 9 underneath the square root. You have to, if you're going to include a minus side, include also a positive 9 to kind of offset it. So that way, with the negative 9 and the positive 9, you combine those to make 0, and since we're technically adding zero, we're not changing the problem. It's a bit of a crafty maneuver. So combining those together will make 49. So we now have the square root of negative x squared minus 6x plus 9, and then outside of those parentheses, a plus 49. Now, why would we ever choose to do this? Well, this expression right here is a perfect square trinomial, as they call it. So that just means it can factor and it factors into x minus 3 times x minus 3. But wait a minute, why don't we just recondense that into x minus 3 squared, and then we have plus 49. So far, so good. Now, in order to continue transforming this into something resembling trigonometric substitution, we're going to actually do a u substitution next. We're going to let u equal x minus 3. If we differentiate both sides with respect to x, we see that du is equal to just 1 dx. So we can just say du equals dx. So now we have rewritten the problem yet again. We have the square root of negative u squared, since u was x minus 3, plus 49. And then our dx becomes du. And if we flip the terms underneath the radical around, we would have 49 minus u squared underneath that square root. This is the key form that's going to resemble one of our trigonometric substitutions. So let's take a look at a table. So here is our handy table of trigonometric substitutions. If you look at our problem, we can actually kind of re-express it as the square root of 7 squared, since 49 is a perfect square, minus u squared du. That's strategic because basically we have a constant squared minus a variable squared. And if you look at these three expressions over here, one of them also has a constant squared minus a variable squared. In their case, the variable is x rather than u, but it's the same idea. So if you want, you can actually change this to the square root of a squared minus u squared. And then what this table tells us is we have to make another substitution. But rather than saying x equals a sine theta, our variable is u, so we'll just say u equals a sine theta. Why don't we notice that our a value is 7, because we have 7 squared and they have a squared. So we'll just write down that a is equal to 7. So basically, we're going to let u equal 7 sine of theta. And then in this procedure, we also have to differentiate. So we'll come over here, we'll differentiate, we get du equals 7 cosine of theta d theta. So now, holy smokes, I know, let's take our expression that we've got going here and let's make some substitutions, trigonometric substitutions. Whoops, that's not what we wanted. 
hold on one second here. We'll grab that, copy, and paste it down below. There it is. So here it comes. We're going to make some strategic substitutions. We have the square root. 7 squared is 49 minus u squared. Well, check it out. u is 7 sine theta. That would mean that u squared is 49 sine squared of theta because we're just squaring the 7 and squaring the sine and squaring the u. So we have minus 49 sine squared of theta times du, but du was 7 cosine theta d theta. Continuing on in the spirit of simplifying, we'll notice underneath the square root, we have a common factor of 49. So we'll factor it out. We'll have 49 times 1 minus sine squared of theta underneath the radical. And then outside the radical, we have the 7 cos theta d theta. Now, if we reference our handy chart, we can see that 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So this 1 minus sine squared right here will be substituted with cosine squared. That's a trig identity that most of us have learned in a previous pre-calculus course. Continue to simplify. The square root of 49 cos squared, well, the square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of cos squared is just cosine. So now we have the integral of 7 cos theta times 7 cos theta d theta. 7 times 7 is 49. Let's factor it out. Cos theta times cos theta is cosine squared of theta, d theta. And then we learned in a previous section that to integrate cosine squared, you have to use yet another identity. And that identity is 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. It's a very common trig identity you want to know. It's going to help us out here. Factor out the 1 half. 49 times 1 half. 49 over 2. We have the integral of 1 plus cos of 2 theta d theta. We can finally integrate this. Now, let's not forget that the integral of cosine of k theta is equal to 1 over k times the sine of k theta. That's a useful integration rule. It can be easily derived using u substitution, but who wants to do that right now? We've done enough work, I think. So we have 49 over 2 times the integral of 1 with respect to theta is theta, plus the integral of cos of 2 theta. We're going to follow this formula here. We would have 1 half sine of 2 theta. We have plus c. We're getting there. Right now, our answer is in terms of theta. Let's go back up to the top. Let's remember that u was equal to 7 sine theta. u equals 7 sine theta. If we divided both sides of that by 7, we would have u over 7 equals sine theta. If we take the inverse sine of both sides, we would have the inverse sine of u over 7 is equal to theta. Why would Greg do that? Well, because theta is in our problem. We have to resubstitute that theta with the expression we had used earlier. So we had let u equal 7 sine theta. We got to go back in terms of u. But that's okay. We can see that theta is the inverse sine of u over 7 plus 1 half, uh-oh, another identity crisis here, sine of 2 theta. That needs to be rewritten as 2 sine theta cosine theta. It's another one of those identities you probably learned in a pre-calc course. Look at this. You have 1 half times 2. 1 half times 2 is just 1. So we can actually just knock that all out slide this over, but we still have that problem in which our answer is expressed in terms of theta. We don't want thetas in our answer. So we go back to this expression right here. You probably have seen your teacher draw right triangles when solving these problems. So this right triangle would be based on the fact that sine of theta is u over 7. Well, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side would be u. The hypotenuse would be 7. We'd have to figure out this side right here. Let's just call it A. We know Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus U squared equals 7 squared. We could subtract the U squared from both sides. And then we can see that A is the square root of 49 minus U squared. So let's replace this A right here with the square root of 49 minus U squared. And then sine of theta 
Well, sine of theta is just opposite over hypotenuse, so it would be u over 7. Okay, so we're going to replace that sine of theta right there with u over 7. I think I just murdered the cosine here, so cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to end up, based on our right triangle, replacing this cosine of theta with adjacent, which is the square root of 49 minus u squared over the hypotenuse, which is 7. Go ahead and multiply those together if you'd like to. That's going to give you 49. So now we have our answer in terms of u. We might think we're done, but we're not because we go all the way back to the top and remember that u was x minus 3. That was one of the first substitutions that we did. So all of these u's have to replace, be replaced with x minus 3's. Let's go ahead and do that. And so we've done that. We've taken these three blue highlighted u's and have replaced them with x minus 3's. That finally is an answer that has been expressed in terms of x. That's the answer to the question.